Hey guys, just want to leave you with a quick video. I'm going to Cape Cod this weekend for Oyster Fest, although uh, news just broke like two days ago that there's actually not going to be any oysters at Oyster Fest this year, at least not raw oysters, no raw shellfish at all, because there's some neurovirus outbreak or something that they're blaming on the, the oyster beds. So they're shutting down all the raw, the raw seafood beds. There's not going to be any oysters at Oyster Fest. I thought that was hilarious. I also don't really like seafood, so it's fine with me. The people I'm going with are, are not happy, very upset. But I'm gone for the weekend regardless, going to Cape Cod. So I figured I'd leave you guys with a video. Um, and, and I was trying to think of topics or whatever. I feel like it, it's important to clear up this whole stuff with the Conor McGregor, Jose, all those stuff. Obviously, it's a, a hot issue in MMA. First of all, current situation, McGregor is the current featherweight champion. He won the belt when he knocked out Jose Aldo. That was last December. Feels like it was years ago, but it hasn't even been a year yet. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, because he's fought so many times since then. He's about to fight Eddie Alvarez November 12th. He fought Nate Diaz twice already. So it feels like it's forever ago. It really wasn't that long ago. Uh, that was Jose Aldo's last appearance in the outside as well. Oh, no, that's not true. Sorry. Jose Aldo fought at uh, UFC 200 in July. He fought Eddie Alvarez. I mean, um, Frankie Edgar. Sorry, my brain is fried. I literally just woke up from a nap. Uh, he fought Frankie Edgar at UFC 200. Let me get this up. And, uh, and won the interim championship. So he became the interim featherweight champion. Has been that ever since. And he's very frustrated about the fact that he hasn't had a chance to rematch Conor McGregor. Understandably so. He's the interim champion. McGregor's the, the current champion. Same weight class. You would assume that they would book that rematch next. The only problem I have with what the UFC has done as far as, as, far as how they've handled everything is that they haven't just bumped Aldo up to featherweight champion because he should be. I personally don't think McGregor ever goes back down to featherweight. I think if he wins the the lightweight championship, they'll force him to vacate it. And I think the main reason they haven't forced him to vacate that belt yet is because they want him to fight Eddie Alvarez in a champion versus champion match. You don't want it to just be McGregor fighting Eddie Alvarez at, at, for the lightweight championship. You have this extra appeal of having it be champion versus champion match. They obviously want the the New York card to be something special. That's the main event. Um, so I get that. I understand from a UFC, from a marketing standpoint, I understand why they're doing that. I think Jose Aldo is the true featherweight champion because I don't think Ray goes back down there. Uh, so first of all, I'll just read a, a clip from this. Aldo posted this on Instagram, um, I don't know, yesterday, I think. So he said, hi, everyone. I was quiet for a while because I wanted to, because I was waiting for my rematch based on how the fight went down. In fact, I was already training for it, but apparently I was wrong. So I want to make something clear to the UFC. For everything I've done, everything I've accepted, and mostly how the fight ended, I will not accept my other fight, any other fight, other than a title shot. My only exception would be fighting the Notorious. I'm pretty sure he's tagged. I don't. I actually don't use Instagram, which is crazy. I always get uh, flack from my friends. But uh, at any time, anywhere, and once that he is afraid and knows that I'm going to win, some broken English in there, but uh, it doesn't have to be a title fight against him. Keep my belt, but I want to whoop your ass anyway. So basically... First of all, McGregor's not afraid. I get that's just kind of posturing and, and him talking trash to try to, whatever, promote the fight or whatever. He's definitely not afraid. Why would he be afraid to, to fight Aldo again? I guess you could say he's afraid of the consequences, but um, I, I don't think there's anything in it for McGregor to, to drop down to featherweight and fight again. He, he cruised through featherweight. He knocked out Jose Aldo, who I actually predicted he would beat Jose Aldo, and I think he'll do it again. I, I agree that the fight, the way it played out, is kind of fluky just in that... Um, a one punch knock it like he landed one punch i don't watch a fight like that and that doesn't prove to me that that mcgregor is better than aldo definitively i think if you dominate someone for five rounds or or really outclass them in in a longer period of time then you prove that you're the, the, the better fighter uh landing one punch doesn't prove that to me i do think he wins i thought he's gonna win the first match i think he wins a rematch as well he's got the size he's got it's a, it's a favorable matchup you think Aldo for the most part would, would strike with McGregor and that's really McGregor's strong suit I think McGregor gets in trouble when grappling comes into play uh potentially but that's not really the case with Aldo so tough to say I do think he wins the rematch um but regardless I understand why Aldo wants that rematch and McGregor from McGregor's standpoint why would he drop down a featherweight and take it He's got to look at whatever's best for his career. I think that McGregor fighting Eddie Alvarez at, at lightweight makes a lot more sense. I think he's a lot better at lightweight just health-wise. I mean, Kevin has said on a number of occasions that, that the cut down is pretty brutal for McGregor. So I, I don't think he goes back down to to featherweight. So I think, you know, if Aldo is serious about this and he really wants to avenge that fight against McGregor, he doesn't care if it's for the belt or anything like that, then you almost have to do Aldo versus McGregor at lightweight. I think that's the way to do it. So if, if Aldo wants to, to come up and fight McGregor at lightweight, that makes sense. 
The only person potentially standing in the way of that is uh, is Nate Diaz because you know all the intrigue from Nate Diaz versus McGregor one and two, and now this third match is obviously going to be a trilogy match, the tiebreaker, so to speak. So I think that's the only thing that stands in the way. But I'm not really sure where where Nate Diaz stands. Uh, as far as how much time he wants off and all that stuff. And they'd have to shoot, obviously have to throw a ton of money at him for, have, to have him come back anyway. Just his approach to fighting, which I, I'm fine with that. But um, the way I just decide to sum it all up, I'm kind of rambling here. The way I see it is this. McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez. If McGregor wins that fight, which I think he could, I, I'm actually picking him to win, but I think it'll be uh, a lot closer than people think. But if McGregor wins that fight against Eddie Alvarez, he's the lightweight champion. Technically, he's still the featherweight champion. Um... I'm not sure this really up to the UFC where they're going to do with that featherweight belt, but technically he's still the featherweight champion. I think at that point, McGregor has two options for his first title defense. You can either have him fight Nate Diaz, and you have this trilogy match, this time with the belt on the line, this time at lightweight, which is probably where it should have been all along. So you have this trilogy match, McGregor versus Diaz 3 for the lightweight championship. That would shatter every record. Or you do the rematch, McGregor versus Aldo, and also have that be at lightweight. I know there's going to be excuses. You know, the same, same reason McGregor wanted a rematch Nate Diaz at welterweight is because he wanted the exact same conditions or whatever, and I think if you if you change the weight class of the fight set, so if you do McGregor versus Aldo at lightweight as opposed to featherweight, I do think that that sort of creates this situation where you could be an asterisk. Aldo could say, or if, if Aldo beats McGregor, it could make no. Actually, no, I take it back. There's no excuses there because Aldo's the smaller guy, and if he beats McGregor at lightweight, that's even more impressive. So, and if McGregor beats him, he already beat him twice. So I, I think that uh, both those fights fights make sense. It depends on who. And I think they're intriguing too. It depends on who the, the UFC can book um, when. I think it's more of a scheduling issue. But if he beats Eddie Alvarez, then I think he fights either Jose Aldo at lightweight for his first health defense or Nate Diaz. Hopefully both if we could get them both in there. But that's where I think everything stands right now. I understand his frustration. Um, by the way, Aldo, I don't think he has anything to lose legacy-wise. It, it hurts that he lost to McGregor, but he had such a dominant run that even if he doesn't make up that loss, I think he'll still be considered one of the best fighters of all time probably the best featherweight of all time. I think people might make the argument with McGregor because he did beat him, and he hasn't lost that featherweight, at least in the UFC. But um, I, I think that... I, I personally would say that Aldo's career stacked head to head with McGregor if they both end today. Aldo definitely has a better run, so hopefully he's remembered as the best, best featherweight of all time, so I think that's what he is. But um, regardless, I, I don't think he needs it for his legacy. I understand why he wants it, and I think that if they rebook the match, it has to be at lightweight. Uh, and then Nate Diaz stand there as well. So bright future at lightweight. I think that's where all the exciting fights are for McGregor. Just the bigger guy has that extra little component of intrigue for everybody. And uh, I feel like that's where he'll stay from now on. So that does it for me. I've got to go to Cape Cod to visit my friend. Um, oyster fest, no oysters. Should be fun. So th thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll keep doing these videos. Oh, by the way, check out the most recent episode of the MMA Mad Podcast. I'll include a link in the, the description below. Very proud of it. Two really somber interviews. Uh, but really, really good interviews. And then I did a fun little segment with my roommate, which I thought was funny. It's probably going to become a recurring segment. So I hope you guys enjoy that episode. Definitely check it out. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check us out at MMAMad.com. No fight card until... Uh, I think there's one the week before UFC 205. So it's not like... New York's not the next one. I think there's one before that. But it's, it's still like not... I don't think there's a fight card until November. So crazy long stretch of, uh, of breaks, I guess. But it's all right. We could all use a break sometimes. Uh, still, MMAMad.com for all your late-breaking news. MMAMad official on Facebook and Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at Nick Risner MMA. I'll include all those links below, so definitely go check that out. Um, and that'll do it. Enjoy your weekend, guys.